and welcome to Legal Affairs. My name is Diamond Liddy and I'm the public defender for the 19th Judicial Circuit. We, you are going to love this show. This is interesting. It's something that we all know about. We have used before, most of us. And very few people know about our, the local setup and how it works and actually the head of the organization. Um, with us today is the communications manager for St. Lucie County Public Safety, Katie Hisson. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Katie. Um, everyone, you know, we all talk about 911, call 911, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, few people, everybody knows that you are there for us, and 911 is so important and, and helps us, you know in emergency critical situations, but they they really don't understand the physical, um, you know, aspects of it, where it's located, what, how it works, um, how many people you have answering phone calls, et cetera. But before we get to that, let's talk about you for a minute. Um, Katie, you, how long have you been the, um, the head poof off, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been a communications manager for two years now. Okay. So it's um, it's been an experience. I've actually been with 911 for 17 years. Okay. And I've worked my way up from a 911 operator all the way up to a communications manager in that time. Wow. Wow. That that yeah. That's of course that's a long time too. <laughs> um, and let's back up a minute. Is the and I was a little confused actually. You you came and talked to our lawyers um, about what umbrella it's under. It, it's not um, nine one one is not under the sheriff's department. No, is we're it? not. Okay. So we're under the board of county commissioners. Okay. So we work for St. Lucie County. Okay. Under the public safety department. Of course, you do work hand in hand with law enforcement, obviously. Correct. You Correct. know, but but they they aren't your boss, so to Correct. speak. Correct. Okay. Correct. Let's before we get into the nuances of nine eleven and how it works and all of that. Tell us about your staff and, of course, some of the staffing issues you've had recently. Um, how many pe it's obviously 911 is open 24 7. Correct. Yeah, and Christmas and New <laughs> Year's and all, all of that. Yes, we are there 365 days a year. Every, yeah. every, every second. day, every second of the day, we're yeah. there. Yeah. We are currently at critical staffing levels. Unfortunately, it is going on across the country. Yeah. Everybody's having the same issue. And we are currently t over 20 positions understaffed. Wow. Now, fully staffed would be how many positions? We have about 62 full time positions. Okay. And so you've got about 40 now. Correct. Wow. Um, and this is a busy time, I'm sure. Yes. Just like. It's a busy time for restaurants and hotels. It's busy time because yes. the school's in session. Um, the snowbirds are still here. Right. You know, we have a lot more population wise during this time of year. Okay. It, now tell us, I've had the fortune of um, being able to walk through 911, see it actually touch and feel what the, the, um, um, your physical building looks like and, and structure. But for those of us who have, haven't, where, first of all, is it located? We are out at 15305 West Midway Road, which is the St. Lucie County Fairgrounds right. area, right in front of there in our Emergency Operations Center building. We are all, the public safety department is housed in that building. And that's a shelter too, yes. right? Okay. Yes, okay, okay. Now, um, so if I wanted to do a tour of 9-11, I walk in, tell me what it looks like. Give us a visual of, of kind of the setup. Well, it's an open concept. So we're, the inside is like two to three stories high inside the 9 Communications Center. So we have... Um, is there, there a reason for that? It's for, to be able to have the radios and the phones going at once and we have what, I look at as carpeted walls. It's padding that helps for the sound okay. and to keep it so it doesn't bounce all over the place. Wow. Okay. Yeah, because you've got everybody answer. Okay, yes. go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. 
So we have 31 phone positions in the comm center. Okay. And we have four different, or I should say, six or seven different pods. Some are call taking pods. We have a supervisor pod. We have a pod for each um, agency that we dispatch for. So St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office, Fort Pierce PD, and Port St. Lucie PD. Okay. And then fire department, the St. Lucie County I was Fire District. Say fire. They're in the building with us. They are separate, but they are in the building and they have their own separate two pods in the room. Okay. With operators right. and stuff. Okay. Right. Um, and the girls or boys um, just literally sit waiting to answer the phone? How does that work? Well, most of our dispatchers, because we are at critical staffing, we only have so many people on at a time. During the day, we try and staff 13 people. So those are a combination of dispatchers and call takers. Our okay. dispatchers that well, sit on the radios can also take phone calls. Okay, what's the difference? Explain. So dispatchers are the ones that sit there and dispatch the law enforcement officers okay. to the calls that we receive. So it's not the same. Per so one person picks up the phone, 911, emergency, blah, 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 and then... They're taking a call. They put it into the, our computer-aided dispatch, okay. which is our CAD. Right. And then that call gets sent to the correct agency because we have it programmed okay. into our system. Got it. And that agency's dispatcher will send the law enforcement out to the call. Oh, got it. Okay. Okay. And um, how, tell, tell us about, you know, training. I mean, you know, I can only imagine what you deal with every single day. I mean, you know, especially without all the, <laughs> having been through COVID and the mental illness that has spiked, the drug abuse and alcoholism that has spiked. Um, it, tell us. It's a long process. Our training takes um, 12 to 14 weeks before an actual um, employee is able to go out on the floor and be by themselves and take calls and dispatch officers. It's a long process. Wow. In the beginning, after they apply, they have to come take a test called critical. It's a test that test their knowledge, skills, and abilities to be able to type and talk and remember things that people tell them. And they have to put it all into this computer system and test them on all their skills. Oh, I, you know, I hadn't even thought of that, but when somebody's talking... Right, I and mean, being able to type at the same time, that is a good thing to have and it's necessary to be whoa. able to work in the 911 call center. Right. Um, yeah, and it, it takes skill and... Yes. It takes a lot, and it takes a very strong person to be able to handle that kind of stress. Yeah. Wow. Now, what about? Um, it, wow. Okay. <laughs> what about? Now, so what after the critical testing, once they pass that, they will interview for the position, get hired, then they start in a classroom. They okay. learn and they get certified in um, a couple of different areas. APCO is our big. Um, book that we teach them it's a program that lets them be telecommunicators and then they also take a department of health test that is a state test that they take that certifies them as a public safety telecommunicator oh i gotcha okay. they get certified in a lot of different um to be able to run somebody we have our um background and when you say run switch. somebody what? so when you get pulled over by an officer right. and they take your driver's license and that means they're going to run your name right to right. make sure you don't have any wants and warrants all that good stuff right so we have uh, tests that they have to be certified in to be able to do those kind of queries on our CAD system well now so law enforcement actually calls 911 well they talk to their dispatcher and they give them the information over I the radio. See. Okay. And okay. then we take that information and put and it into run, our system. Run it and let them know, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a war outstanding warrant out of, you know. Our computer aided dispatch, um, it's linked to the state. We have a state line that it's right. linked to. And then we also link to a countrywide, which is called NCIC. And right. that runs it for every 50 states that right. is in our country. So they can pull up. Warrants from anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Interpol. Wow. Right, right. Yes, they, they got those too. Oh, well, yeah. Unfortunately, we know about that. No, uh, no, no. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so so they have to do the 14 week course, take the test. Now, what about the so they have two weeks in the classroom, right? And then they'll go on the job training. Okay. That's when they sit with a communications training officer. Okay. And the training officer teaches them about the different radio positions. There's two different ones. There's a main channel and there's an off channel called a records channel where they do all the queries on the names, right, right. call the tow trucks for vehicles, all that stuff. And then they take them and they train them on the phones. So each position gets a certain amount of time. They do 144 hours of on-the-job training per position. Wow. And even longer if they still need time to get it, because sometimes it's a lot of information to take in. Oh. And we allow and we you know, stretch their training out so they know and we know that they're comfortable with what they're doing and right. they're able to keep you know, the officers on the road safe. That is a big priority of ours. Sure. Now, do, do, do you, have you ever had somebody get to that point on the job and they just couldn't do it? Yes, yeah. it happens yeah. a lot. And you don't know until you try. Oh, yeah. And that that's why be... we encourage trying. You know, it's important to, so you can learn things. It's a life lesson to be yeah. able to go through the training and say, okay, well, I tried and I know I can't do that. That's a, too hard for me. Right. But it's important to do that. What educational background do they have to have? They only need a high school diploma or a GED. Wow. That's it. Okay. To be able to start at 911. Now, my my big question is, what about, now, do they have to take any psychological tests or anything like that? No, we don't do that. Okay. Because we are under the Board of County Commissioners and not under a law enforcement yeah. agency, we don't require the psych test or anything right. like that. Right, okay. We don't do all that. But uh, a segue um, to this question what about, do they get any training on how to deal with crazy people, you know, and I hate to use that word, with mentally ill people, with, with people who are, are, you know, desperate, who are drunk, who are, you know, high, who are suicidal. What, what training do we you We don't have, like, we don't send them out and give them a class on psychological training. No. Right, right. It, it's involved in the um, classroom training. We talk about what they deal with. We go through different scenarios. Um, we do role play. Oh, and then okay. A lot okay. of it is on the job. I was going to say, they, they're not going to Learning really... by listening and learning by having, when you're sitting with your trainer and they're going through the motions, that gives you, and then the trainer help, has you do it and while they're sitting with you. And it's all about making you comfortable with it before you do it by yourself. Right. Now, if... If um, 911, um, what do we, specialists, what do we call them? 911. <laughs> 911 uh, telecommunicators. Te the 911 telecommunicator, let's say she or he, are there, is it mostly women or is it men and women? It's more women than there is men. Okay. They're on the phone and um, uh, we've got a woman who's mentally ill and she's saying she's going to kill herself or whatever. And the even though the person has been through the training, they've worked there two years, they're feeling like, you know, they can't deal with this. Can they wave their hand and get somebody some help over? Yes. Or That's what? why there's a supervisor and an assistant supervisor okay. on the shift at all times. So if they do have trouble, it, you know, it does happen. Because I, I there are yeah. callers that you just can't get through to them. Right. They're very excited. The situation is the worst they've ever been through. And they don't know how to react to it. Right. So right. it's it's sometimes hard to get through to them and get them to understand that we're there to help them and that we need the information so the officers can help them. Sure. But we do have supervisors that can take over the calls that if, have been there for a lot longer. They've right. They've been there, seen it all. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And usually we can get them the help they need. Okay. Um, do you get, um, you know, while the the telecommunicator is talking to the person um is, is someone dispatched at that time to get out there yes. while they're keeping them on the phone to that's help? why one of the first questions we ask people is where are you right what is your location yeah because that's the most important because if we don't know where you are we can't send help right so okay. that is one of the first questions they are trying to ask is where are you wow okay so um We've got, you know, and, and I'm sorry, I didn't even go 
prior to let's let's skip around here a little bit prior to doing this what did you do I'm just curious yes. Well, I have done quite a few things. No, I, I mean, for to be to have this job, you gotta you gotta be pretty special. So, what did what did you do before this? Well, before I worked for nine one one, I actually worked for a law firm. I did uh, social security disability. I worked with people filling out their paperwork and stuff. Right. And before that, I mean, I've worked for Walmart. I've worked for <laughs> Applebee's. Arby's. So, I mean, I've had multiple jobs, but all all, all customer service though. Uh, that's what I was gonna say. Yes. Bingo. And, I love and, uh, customer service. I love helping the community. I was born and raised here in Fort Pierce. Oh, okay. So this is my home. Right. And it's where my parents live. It's where I grew up. It's. I love our community. St. Lucie County is very special to me. What made you want to be a uh, nine one one operator? Well, my mom actually worked for the sheriff's office for a long time. Okay. She's retired now. But she, she was always about helping people. Right. And she taught me a lot, the fundamentals of, you know, being able to stick to a job, have that work ethic. Right. Have um, the want to serve your community. Sure. And that's always what I wanted to do. So she actually told me about the position when it opened up, and I applied, and I... I ran with it. Now, are you actually um, on the phones now? No. As a manager, we can still help yeah, when needed. If, 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 it, sure. if yeah. the you know, phones are ringing off the hook, we jump up and we help right. out. But no, I'm actually not. We do a lot of day-to-day -day stuff. I'm in charge of the training, right. and I bring all the new hires in. We have a lot of responsibilities inside the 911 center, so we, we do a lot of running around. Okay. Now, what about um, do they, they have to continue getting trained or is the initial training the bulk of it and then it's all basically on on the job no actually they have continued education that they have to receive okay um, in order to keep their certifications they have to get 24 hours of continuing education credits right. through our APCO and um, we do a lot of um, seminars and stuff for our people send them to training that way they continue to learn and grow because computers they change yeah. every day. Right. And uh, the phone system, that changes every day. Cell phones were invented. Right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they just keep getting more special and special. We do text to 911. People text in to 911. That is what I want to talk yes. about because when you spoke to our group, everybody's like, well, I. I was a lot of the kids, were. <laughs> but that you can text. Yes. I mean, tell us about that. So if you're in an emergency situation where you can't talk, it's important to be able to still reach out for help. So people can just text 911 and tell them what's going on, give them the location, right. give them the, and they will text back and forth with one of our call takers. That's until the officer can get on scene and help out. They don't have to talk to an officer. They don't have to talk to anybody if they don't want to. Right. They right. can just give us the information so we can send help to the people that need it. Well, in a you know a, um, these situations where where there's school shootings and stuff mm -hmm. like that, or you don't know where the. I mean, that's exactly what you have to do. Oh, you yes. can't you know can't say. Uh, yeah, you, you know, can't be heard talking okay. in the exactly. hallways or whatnot. So they can definitely text to nine one one and get the help that they need. No, so uh, how many people text? Not There's, very many. I know. I couldn't believe Not that many. when you told us that. Because although it's been out for a while, we've right. had it for almost two years, I believe, now. I don't think the majority of people know. I don't know. think a lot of the community know, although we put it out there. Oh, I, I'm not we blaming put it you. Out there. I just, oh, I know. you know. Yeah, the public safety department has put it out numerous times. We actually um, put up a booth at the public safety fest that they have at Clover Park right, every year. Right. We'll be there again in April. and. It's on our pamphlets, and um, I know they talk about it at the different agencies, and sure. they put it out to the community. I just hope more people are aware that it's there. And although we don't get pictures or video, you can't send us that. We right. just do the texting, but it's an important tool. And the response is, is the same as calling 911. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, unless you're in a situation where you've got somebody and you don't want to be heard right um of course i'm old-fashioned but i would i would rather call and hear the voice and say you know this is right. what's going on but um um you know that there, there are situations where it's i mean i'm sure it's a lifesaver that they could do it yes it is wow
Um, okay, so where were we? Gosh, we're jumping all around here. <laughs> so they, they pick up the phone, um, they talk to the person. Um, now, it, it, what, what about the person? Is there a time period that they're taught or whatever? Let's say someone's intoxicated or, right. you know, high on drugs or whatever. I mean, sometimes people just are lonely <laughs> and they're calling you, right? Or am we I We do right? get those callers. Right? They just don't <laughs> And have that's okay. And it, it happens. And they just, they want to know what time it is. They want to know, you know, um, is it raining today? Um, there's a lot of reasons that people call 911. And we're always happy to talk to them. <laughs> you know, call 911 if you need us. That, that's what we're there for. But we do give them other avenues, other people that they can call. Like the 211. The 211. And talk about that right. just for a second. So 211 is a service that you can call if you need help but and you just want to talk to somebody. You don't want to speak with a law enforcement officer face to face. You don't want, you know, an ambulance or anything coming to check your health. But you want to talk to somebody because you're feeling lonely or you're feeling down. 211 is perfect for you. Yes. You can call them, and there's somebody there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, just like 911. Right. And, and they're not going to send law enforcement out. No. But they are. But gonna, they are required to let us know if there's if there's a critical mass. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, so what do you teach? I got ahead of myself again. What What do you teach your people? How long are they allowed to sit on the phone with somebody? Where they? I mean, we don't there, give them a time limit. Really? Okay. <laughs> well, no, because because really you can't put. A time limit on someone and their problems. You can't. Right. If it's if it's necessary, we were we are on the phone with them until law enforcement arrives. Okay. Because sometimes they're you know they're scared. It's an uncomfortable situation, and having that person on the other end of the line, you may not see them ever, but it's comforting to know somebody's there with you, even just on the phone. Okay. And if they're intoxicated to the point they're just rambling and talking you you still dispatch yes. law enforcement okay to to see if they're that in talk <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah yes. or they need help because you don't know um somebody could be drunk somebody could be on drugs um or you know having just a bad day you don't right. know right so it's important for law enforcement to go investigate and check it out that's what they're there for and are are they trained on this Do yes you? okay they are well, tell us they a little have, bit. Law enforcement has a lot of training that we don't get, and they deal with critical incidents, stress management on right. the job, because um, they're face-to-face -face with everyone. We have, um, I don't know all of the training that the law enforcement does, because we don't do it with them, but right. we do have what's called a critical incident stress management team that when our dispatchers, our law enforcement officers, our firefighters, our hospital staff, whenever a critical incident happens, and um, someone passes away, or um, it's very stressful on the people that work for us, they call out this team to help with debriefing, to make them feel better, get them help right. that they need if they need somebody else to talk to. Because sometimes a dispatcher needs help too. I gotcha, wow. Well, um, what are your busiest days? <laughs> <laughs> That's really hard to say because they're all busy. <laughs> yeah, no, I, <laughs> Come I, I on, Diamond. <laughs> People call 911 whenever they feel no, like I, it. No, <laughs> I know. Well, is, is, is day busier than night, We for have example? certain peak hours. Okay, and what are so, they? So pretty much after people get up for work in the morning, that's when it starts. So kids don't want to go to school, their parents call 911. Yeah, it does start that early. <laughs> and Whoa. then they, they go to work and people get in motor vehicle accidents. So we're pretty busy during the daytime hours. And then oh, yeah. okay. after people get off work and they go out to dinner and, you know, people start drinking, we get a lot of calls in the middle of the night because of that. And it's just, there's a numerous amount of reasons. If it rains outside, we start blowing up because... There's You're a lot kidding. of accidents. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I just thought people were bored. They couldn't no. go outside. They're just calling no, you No, If it rains outside, it, we definitely have more accidents, especially yeah. since we have two major highways that right. run through St. Lucie County, right. the Florida Turnpike and 95. And although Florida State, the Florida State Troopers, they run those highways, we help out. Our deputies, our officers, they all help out with all the motor vehicle accidents right. that happen because right. you have to be able to control the traffic after that.
Well, what about, is Christmas busy? Oh, yeah. Really? Christmas. Yeah, well, you know what happens when families get together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just not used to that, so yeah. I don't think of those two. I figure holidays you're opening presents are, and eating. So. You know, certain holidays are busier than others. Well, like July 4th, of course. Right. Yeah. Fourth of July, New Year's. Oh, yeah. That's a big holiday. Christmas, Thanksgiving, because, you know, you have a lot of family that come in Thanksgiving. Oh, my goodness. And then the domestic start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. We're how, busy around the clock, though. We are. No, I, I, gosh, I can only imagine. What, what, how are you, how are you dealing with the shortage, Katie? Um, our people are working more and more. They are mandated overtime. Um, I feel so bad for a lot of our dispatchers because they have to put in so many hours to make sure that we are covered so we can answer the phones when people call because we always have to be there. Yeah, Somebody you, always needs to be there to answer that phone. Is there, a, and, and I want to follow up on this, but is, is there so many rings that they have to pick? I mean, the, we have what's called a NINA standard. Okay. And um, that's the National Emergency Number Association. And they have to um, answer within the first 15 seconds. Wow. Okay. That is okay. usually the top 90 percentile, 95 percent answer within the first 15 seconds and so it, it, w when you say mandated overtime I mean so these people are working how many hours they usually straight? work there 42 because they have two hours of built-in overtime every week anyways due to their seven to seven schedule Wow and um, then in a monthly basis they add 24 sometimes 12 sometimes 18 but right now we're at 24 hours a month whoa does it, it uh, yes it's a lot yeah, I mean, so, and what is, we're almost out of time. I told you it'd go mm. fast. Um, what's the most number of hours in a row people can work or should work or do Well, we work? try not to let them work seven days a week because that is too much stress on the body. They do need a work-home balance. It right. is important for their mental health, their well-being, to be able to have time off from there. So we try not to let them work more than four to five days in a row. Okay, but... But sometimes it does happen. But it's, it is the most they can work seven hours? Uh, they can work up to 16 hours per shift. So that's 12 regular plus four hours overtime on top of that. But then they have to have an eight-hour stretch off in between their shifts. Like kind of like pilots, etc. Right, right. They wow. have to have time to sleep. <laughs> it's <Jeez>. important. <sighs> well... As I say, we, we got just a few seconds. I want to thank you for all you do and for keeping us safe and, and watching you. over us. And if someone out there has seen this show and they have a GED or a high school education, who should they call? They need to go on <laughs> stlucycounty.gov website, okay. go to jobs and apply for a public safety telecommunicator. Okay, and I bet you when they do that somebody will call them back really quickly yes right? they will <laughs> <laughs> so we got it we got to fill those what 20 positions 20 plus positions yes jeez okay katie you're wonderful thank, thank you thank you very much Diamond. and thanks for keeping us safe thank you